Hi and welcome to WEH videos. My name is Skip and this is the updated part three on my series on VFR flight planning, the navigation log. And we left off last time where we were going to calculate the true airspeed and we had our information manual here or the pilot operating handbook and we are looking at the cruise performance and you'll notice here it says pressure altitude so in order to get this correct we need to use pressure altitude so before we get started with the calculations here I want to go over exactly what pressure altitude is so the official technical definition of pressure altitude is the height above a standard datum plane SDP which is a theoretical level where the weight of the atmosphere is equal to 29.92 inches of mercury or 1013.2 millibars as measured by a barometer. So that's the technical term here. And let me see if I can't explain that a little bit to you better. All right, let's see if I can make some sense out of this pressure altitude. Okay, we just learned that pressure altitude is based on atmospheric pressure of 29.92 with a temperature of 15 C. This is our standard pressure at sea level. Here's our sea level there. So if we are flying at 5,500 feet on a standard pressure day, our altimeter would read 5,500 feet. This assumes, of course, that we have our altimeter set at 29.92. If we were to drop a tape measure down from our airplane to sea level, it would read 5,500 feet. Now, notice that as we go up in altitude, our pressure drops. So, basically, it's almost one inch for every thousand feet. So, at 1,000 feet, our pressure is to 8.86 at 2,000 feet to 7.86 so approximately one inch per thousand feet. Also notice that we are losing two degrees C for every thousand feet. So at 5,500 feet we're going to have a pressure on a standard pressure day of 24.43 at plus 4.1 degrees C. So we're going to use this temperature of 4.1 C later on in our calculations. But let's just move on here. Now let's just say we have a high pressure day and it's 30.02 degrees. So this here would technically move our 29.92 pressure or the standard datum plane up since you cannot have a higher pressure above a lower pressure. And so just how far is it going to move that? So the difference of 29.92 and 30.02 is 0.1. Now remember, 1 inch, 1,000 feet. So this is one-tenth of an inch, so one-tenth of 1,000 is going to be 100 feet. So this is going to move the standard datum plane 100 feet. And again, since you cannot have a high pressure above a low pressure, it's going to move the standard datum plane up 100 feet. So here's an example. Here's our standard datum plane is 100 feet. Now, to get our pressure altitude, we measure from the standard datum plane to our true altitude, and that is 5,400 feet. So our pressure altitude for our little flight we're going to be doing here at 30.02 pressure is going to be 5,400 feet pressure altitude. So now let's look at a low pressure. We're going to take the 29.62 and we're going to subtract that from the 29.92. This comes up with a negative 0 0.30 inches, right? And that equates to 300 feet. And again, you cannot have a higher pressure above a low pressure. So this is going to bring our standard datum plane down here. And how far? Well, 
300 feet. So now we measure from the standard data plane here up to our 5,500 feet true altitude. And we have a pressure altitude here of 5,800 feet. So that's how pressure altitude works. So what exactly does that mean for you as a pilot? So we're flying along at 5,500 feet on a standard pressure day with our altimeter set to 290.92. Everything's great. But we, now we run into a high pressure area of 30.02. This is great. Well, our altimeter now is going to display 5,400 feet because we did not make the correction. So what we're going to do is we're going to climb. And we're going to get up here to get our altimeter to read 5,500 feet. Well, guess what? We already were at 5,500 feet, but our altimeter said we were at 5,400, so we climbed. We're 100 feet higher than it should be. The same is true with a low pressure. Now we're flying into a low pressure, and our altimeter is still set for 290.92. At that, our altimeter is going to display 5,800 feet. So we think we're at 5,800 feet. So we're going to descend until our altimeter displays 5,500 feet. But in actuality, we already were at 5,500 feet, our true altitude. But our alt to get our altimeter to display 5,500 feet, we descended 300 feet. So now we're at 5,200 feet but our altimeter is displaying 5,500 feet. Pretty scary. Now let's get back to doing some calculations. All right, now we're getting back to our pilot handbook. And we go to cruise performance. And here we have our pressure altitude listed. And we have standard temperature. That would be 15 degrees C. 20 degrees below that and 20 degrees above that. So that's where we have to determine what numbers we are going to use. Now I've gone ahead and blown this up a little bit to make it a little bit easier for you to follow along. So we're at 5,400 feet pressure altitude and we have 4,000 and 6,000. So we're going to fall somewhere in between these numbers. We're not at 6,000 and we're definitely not at 4,000. We have our RPM, so we decided we were going to cruise at 2,500 RPM. So we have to determine between the 4,000 and the 6,000 and the different temperatures. So if you remember, when we got our weather at Calusa, the temperature was plus 17 C. And now we learned that the temperature at 5,500 feet is 4 C on a standard pressure day. So what we're going to do is take this 4C and subtract it from the 17C and we end up with 13C. So now that's the temperature we have to use. Now is that a standard temperature? No, it's 13 degrees above it. And it's not 20, so we're somewhere between 20 degrees above and the standard temperature of 4. So we need to choose between these two what we're going to do. First of all, remember our RPM, 2,500. So we need to decide now between standard temperature and 20 degrees above standard. And so we're going to have to do a little bit of math here between the temperatures and also the altitudes. So let's start by looking at the difference between the 4,000 and the 6,000. So knots true airspeed. It says we're going to have a true airspeed of 115 knots and 115 knots. Wow, that makes it pretty simple, doesn't it? That's at standard temperature, but we're not there. And now at 20 above, it's 15 and 14. You know what? There's no reason to do anything here. We're going to select 115 knots as our true airspeed. So calculating the gallons per hour now is going to be a little bit more challenging because we have four different numbers here. At 4,000 feet at our 2,500 RPM, we're going to burn 8.0 gallons per hour at a standard temperature and 7.5 gallons per hour at 20 above standard. And at 6,000 feet, it's going to be 7.6 gallons per hour 
and 7.1 gallons per hour. So let's just do a little bit of math here to make this a little easier. So let's just take the 6,000 feet and the 4,000 feet and we'll subtract and we end up with 2,000 feet. If we take the 8.0 gallons per hour and subtract the 7.6 gallons per hour, we end up with 0.4 gallons per hour. So now if we divide the 4 into the 2,000, we end up with 500. So we have 500 feet for every 0.1 gallons per hour. So if we take the 7.6 at 6,000 feet and add 0.1 to that, we end up with 7.7. .7. And 7.7 .7 gallons per hour with these calculations would be at 5,500 feet. So standard temperature 7.7, .7, that would be a good number for our gallons per hour calculation here. And we can apply this same process to the 20 above with the 7.5 and the 7.1. So we have the 7.5 minus the 7.1. Look at that. 0 0.4, 0 0.1 for 500 feet. We add the 0.1 to the 7.1. We end up with 7.2 gallons per hour. And and at 20 above the standard temperature, we have 7.2 gallons per hour, and this is a good number for that. All right, so now we need to make a decision. What are we going to use? Are we going to use the 7.7 .7 or the 7.2? And this I'm going to leave for you guys to decide. I'm going to make my choice, but again, this is an individual thing, what you think is best, because we want to err on the side of safety. We don't want to have any problems. We certainly don't want to run out of fuel. So this was a lot of calculating here and probably not all that necessary because for me I'm a very cautious person. I'm going to be extremely conservative here and I'm probably going to go with 7.7 .7 or even 8 gallons per hour here just because I don't want to take any chances. But for the sake of this tutorial here, I'm going to go with the 7.5. That's just going to make the math a lot easier with the rest of the calculations. So 7.5 is our gallons per hour. All right, back to the Navlog, and let's go ahead and put that information in. Our true air speed we calculated at is 115 knots. Now, obviously, we're not going to do that between Calusa and Williams, and maybe not even the top of climb. So we're going to put this 115 here for our true air speed. And gallons per hour, we decided on 7.5, just to be conservative to make sure we don't run out of fuel. So we have our true air speed, and now we want to calculate our calibrated air speed. So with that, we can figure out what our indicated airspeed ought to be. And to calculate that, we need our pressure altitude and the temperature. We got the temperature right here at 6,000 feet. It's plus 17. So it could be a little bit below that. Uh, we're pretty close to 6,000. So we're just going to go with the 17C. So now we get to break out the E6B and have some fun. All right, my favorite tool, the E6B. Now, I know this can be intimidating, but it's really not that bad when you just focus on one thing. And today, we're dealing with speed. So this outer scale is going to represent our true air speed. We have 10, 11, 12. We're going to add a zero. That's going to be 100, 110, 120. Here's 115. That's our true air speed. Now what we do is we come down here and we look at our pressure altitude in thousands of feet. Remember, our pressure altitude is 5,400. So we're going to put that 5,400 below the 17C on this scale here. So let's see how that works. We're going to rotate this around. And now this outer scale here rotates. So we have 5,400 right there. We want to put 17C right above it. So we have 5,400 pretty close to 17C. Obviously, as you can see, you're really not going to get super precise on this, but we're going to be close enough for what we need. 
Now we've come back over here, 115 knots right here, and we come down to this scale here, and we read 100, 110, here's 105, here's 104, 103. It's between 104, 103, it's closer to the 103, so our calibrated airspeed is going to be 103 knots. So, back to our navigation log, and we're going to put in our calibrated airspeed of 103 knots. And now we can calculate what our indicated airspeed ought to be. And we do that with our POH. So we have airspeed calibration, normal static. And we have flaps up, flaps 10, and flaps 40. But we're going to just use the flaps up here because we are cruising. And we just got our calibrated airspeed at 103. So when we come across here, we have 99 and 108. So we're going to be right up in here in our indicated airspeed. Let's see if we can't figure this out. So for calibrated airspeed, we are between 99 and 108 knots. And for the knots indicated airspeed, we have 100 to 110. So we're going to be right up in here. Now I'm just going to give this my best guess here. I find this rather difficult to do here. But I'm going to say 103 is right about here. And if we go up here, that looks like it's 103 or 104. It even could be 103 and a half. I'm going to go with 104, and I'm going to say that our indicated airspeed is going to be 104 knots. And that, my friends, is all the calculating we are going to do today. So, what we're going to do is we're going to make a little note up here. Indicated airspeed, 104 knots. So that's it for part three. We end up with our indicated airspeed of 104, and we'll pick it up next time where we will get our wind correction angle. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please click the like button. If you have any questions or want to leave a comment, that would be great. Thanks again for watching, and God bless.